Have you been wanting to learn about the Facebook algorithm and actually how it works? Because there's a lot of information and misinformation out there. But today's video, I'm going to actually break down uh, the five measurement metrics that the Facebook algorithm um, actually provides and has uh, so you, you can benefit. And then also I'm going to provide five pro tips, five pro tips that you can use today, put them in your business and actually master using the Facebook algorithm. Stay tuned. This one's going to be awesome. <laughs> What's up, Flowchat Connector? Sean, back at you with another high ticket tune-up. Hope you're doing really well today. Make sure and smash that like button, share this out to somebody who needs to get better in sales. And of course, if you find some value throughout this video, please, please, please subscribe to the channel. Um, I look for subscribes each and every week, and I, you know, less than 90% of you guys are actually subscribed to my channel watching this. So please, please subscribe. Would love that. Only if you find value, of course. So today we're going to talk about the algorithm. I think the algorithm is really valuable. Um, if you know how it works, you can man not manipulate the system, but you can play the system to your advantage. You can never manipulate any system. And so today we're going to dive in and talk about the Facebook algorithm, what it is and how it even works. So what on earth is the Facebook algorithm? Well, there's this term called edge rank. Now, we don't know if it's a formal term or not a formal term, but edge rank is the name that the Facebook algorithm has been given, right? And it works off uh, affinity score, weight, and time. Uh, and there's this weird formula that was actually created to measure edge rank. And so nobody truly knows exactly what the algorithm spits out at you, but just know that it's called edge rank. So what is it? It's a set of rules that the platform uses to determine what content should be shown to users and when to show it. Very simple and straightforward. Here is on this page, the formula, again, sigma, U, E, W, E, D, E. Um, the edges are E, and then um, it just kind of goes through the formula here, but let's talk about it, right? So it's similar to a credit rating that you would get for your credit when you go buy a house or do something like that. And so it does work in a similar fashion uh, of how like a credit score would work. And the three things that it really focuses on is number one is what we call the affinity score. That's the score between the viewing user and somebody creating things called edges. What's an edge, Sean? Well, an edge is when you like something or you subscribe to a fan page or you look something up on Facebook. Every time you take an action on Facebook, Facebook calls that an edge. And that edge is then either shown or not shown to all of your friends. And so there's millions and millions of edges that are created every second. And so the algorithm could never show all of them in your news feed. But what's shown in your news feed are the edges or the actions that are taken by all of the rest of your network and, and put out there to the world. Now, what's interesting is the things that are the most relevant uh, that you have, you know, people that you've been interacting with, or, uh, you know, people that have a lot of mutual connections with you, the edges that those, those people take are more likely to be shown up on your feed than those that aren't right. So the affinity score is a score based on, are you friends with that person? Do you interact with that person? Do you have a bunch of mutual friends? That's a simple way to put it. Uh, and I'll leave it at that. Secondly is something called edge weight, right? So each edge that's created, each action that somebody creates on Facebook, that edge is what we call them again, or at least what Facebook calls them has a weight. And so for example, a long form comment on a social post is weighted heavier, right? More weight than just liking that particular post sharing a post to someone specific or a group of people specifically has more weight than liking uh, a post, right? Uh, so the edge weight is also considered on, you know, like when, when it's actually the, when tweaking the algorithm in your favor. And then lastly is time decay. We got to remember that old news decays. So um, new, new news turns to old news, old news dies, right? So this is how the algorithm has been set up from the beginning. It's not my rules. It's just what Facebook put together. And so it's important for you to uh, understand those things. Now, let's get into how the measurement metrics actually apply for edge rank in the Facebook algorithm. So there's five measurement metrics that the algorithm focuses on. These are important to know about. And again, on the next page, I'm going to give you five pro tips on how you can um, really maximize the use of this. So number one is what they call inventory. So this is all the possible content a user can see when they log in. That's the inventory all over Facebook, right? The algorithm sifts through this vast amount of information to decide on what to display. 
And what is displayed is based on those three categories that I talked about a little bit earlier, right? And so what we so so that's how it works. So it's it just sees everything and it provides you actually um, of all the edges that are created, all the the actions that somebody taken. Uh, the algorithm shows you less than 0.2% on your news feed. So just know that that's um, really kind of the number. Um, secondly is signals. Signals are data points that Facebook uses to understand potential value of content, right? And what is a signal? Well, that's a user behavior, like a like, a comment, or a share versus post characteristics, like who made the post, when they made the post, and what type of post it was. So it evaluates the signals on two different uh, features like the, the person looking at the content, are they liking, commenting, and sharing, but then also the post characteristics. So you as the user, um, you know, who you're posting for when you post that and the type that you of post that you make. Is it a video? Is it a picture? Is it just a phrase? Um, those are the kind of signals that Facebook will read, evaluate, and then put into the algorithm um, in your favor or against you, right? Next one is the predictions that the algorithm will make. Past behavior predicts future action. How likely are your viewers of your content to like, comment, or share? If you have viral content on an average that's always getting likes, comments, and shares, your posts and comments are more likely to be shown up in your friends' news feeds. Therefore, you're going to get more exposure, and that's going to lead to uh, more interaction on the platform. And again, all social platforms are focused on getting more user time, people to actually take action. It's almost like a drug. A lot of people say that uh, they have gamified it in such a way that when you interact in the in the platform, you do get credit. It's just through this thing called an algorithm, right? The next one is what we call relevancy score. So each post that is made by you or somebody else is assigned a relevancy score based on the predictions of past behavior. Older posts can reappear if they have high enough relevancy. Example, I was just speaking with uh, the guy that's helping us write our book, and he was saying that he knows this other gentleman who is running a Facebook ad, um, which is a post posted on a, a fan page, and then you give Facebook dollars, and then they show it out to the world. You probably know what paid ads are if you're here listening to me right now. Um, but one of his posts has consistently been profitable now for more than 18 months straight. And it's because his relevancy score is super high and he's trained his algorithm in order to show it to just the right people. So you can do that again, coming in a second. And then lastly is what we call user feedback. Facebook actually sends surveys and you may have gotten one of these before. It's like, hey, tell us about this. Or did you want to take a quick survey? Answer these three questions, those types of things. When Facebook is throwing that at you, it takes the responses that you make and it dumps it into the measurement on that particular person's post or anything else like that. So it, it's consistently growing and learning. And again, algorithms are powered by AI, artificial intelligence. They're continually learning. So you need to remember that your, it's not like a, a snapshot that it takes, but it's a course over the time of your entire account that the algorithm is trained, right? So that's why when you're starting a new particular Facebook profile, as an example, you want to do something called seasoning it, where you actually start to feed the algorithm relevant information, topics, data, pictures, text, videos, uh, so that you can start to train the algorithm to go and find other people that have similar interests. That's why it's important to always stay on topic. So here's the five pro tips that I think are going to be very powerful in your favor to use the algorithm. Number one is know it's a secret. Nobody truly knows what the algorithm says or does, but just know that there's five main metrics that it looks for and it spits into that system. And that's what comes out as the score, right? The edge rank. Um, secondly, it's a continually learning system. It's built on large language models. They're called LLMs in the AI world that you would know that. And it will consistently always improve and get better and get more specific. And so the more specific you can create content around a particular niche example if you're in the real estate niche talk about all the different types of, of real estate deals that you can do and you go down the path of like here's how to use video as a realtor or something like that right so it's like if you have all the topics that talk about your specific niche um, on your page it's going to get more relevancy score and it's going to boost the edge rank in your favor and you're going to be able to be shown to more people which will then in turn create the likes the comments the shares it's like the spiral thing that happens but just know it's designed and built and runs on AI. And it's important for you to understand that. Uh, next, it favors meaningful interactions. So when you're perusing Facebook and you're on the platform, 
make sure that you're dropping comments on people's posts. Very valuable to do that, but don't just make like a smiley face or a nice post or something like that. Write something a little bit more meaningful. What did that post mean to you? Why did it mean that to you? Like be three or four sentences or even write a book, drop a picture, drop a short video as a comment to a post. And that's going to boost your algorithm in your favor so that when you post later, it's going to see that, oh, you posted on Joe's post over there. I'm going to go show the same thing over there because that seems like it's a relevant topic. That's how it works, right? Um, share other things that you think are cool. Give a lot of reactions. And the other thing that it looks for that most people don't know about is click throughs. So if somebody says, hey, click the link below, click that link, go over and check out the page, see if it's worth your time, right? That click through is actually going to feed into your edge rank score as your own profile. And then it will boost up your posts and, and send them out to those people of which you're clicking through on their content as well. This is why when Russell Brunson was teaching us, he said, go into your dream 100 all the people that you would wish to have as a client and engage in all of their stuff, guess where your stuff is going to be shown on their feed, which is very valuable real estate, right? Next one is stay focused on what the platform promotes. So Facebook does a pretty good job of coming out with new things, uh, new features, new benefits, new little uh, things that they're working on all the time. Try to stay abreast of those things. There's lots of different, in fact, I should probably find some and drop in the, maybe in the comment section below, you'll see a couple of links or something like that. But um, there's, there's all sorts of uh, Facebook resources that come out that um, share things like, hey, we're focused on this. I remember for a long time, they were focused on Let's build, uh, you know, like Facebook wants to connect the world. That's kind of their motto. So Facebook groups were really valuable. Pages are now making a run. Like if you hear Gary V talk about that stuff. Um, so just stay focused on what the platform promotes and don't be afraid to talk about that in that form, right? If, uh, you know, uh, shorts or videos, uh, the, the stories on Facebook is what they're called. They're continually pushing stories quite a bit. Stories are the ones that are getting kind of the most viewage and, and usage at the moment. So don't be afraid to make a story, right? Uh, go down the path and learn something new if you haven't done that before. Lastly, and but not least, uh, please produce content that's relevant and do it on a timely basis. What I mean by this is very simple. Set up a cadence that you can post regularly, whether it's once a week, twice a week, five times a week, whatever it's going to be, 10 times a day, doesn't matter. But as long as you're consistent, the algorithm looks for consistency, not spikes. So don't put like 50 pieces of content today, wait three months and then put 50 more pieces. That's not a good cadence. The algorithm is not going to play in your favor. So it looks for people that are using the platform like a real person and then posting on a consistent basis. And if you follow these steps, what you will find is that your account will never get throttled. You'll be able to message as many people as you ever wanted to, and you can grow your business from using Facebook. It's one of the most powerful tech uh, uh, systems that's out there in terms of social. I know this. We've done tens of millions off Facebook alone, um, and I'm very, very grateful for the, the, the platform itself. A lot of people do think that Facebook was designed and built for the big business, but it was actually truly designed for the small business. And they have so many different feature sets. That's crazy. The hard thing is because they have so many users, they don't have the um, bandwidth in terms of staff to get back to people when there's kind of an issue or something like that. So that's why the small business owner is like, why don't you get back to me? Uh, you know, because they it's just there's too many people. Right. So um, but that's it. If you want to um, play the advantage of the algorithm to your favor, those are some of the things that you should stay focused on. And when and if you do stay focused on these things, I can assure you that you will see your social engagement on that platform continue to skyrocket and you're going to start winning at the highest level possible. So there you have it. Uh, that was how the algorithm calculates things. And there's five pro tips on how you can use it to your advantage. But that said, again, like the video, please share it out to someone who can use it. And of course, if this was valuable, please subscribe to the channel because I got a lot more coming your way and I can't wait for you to see it. So with that said, I can't wait to see you next time. Ciao for now. Thank you.